Look at that plant. I want you to know that everything was grown in my garden. Don't touch that plant! Is it poisonous? She'll become part of the plant. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Flower Power Garden Hour. I'm your host, Marlene, and this is your February garden to-do list. And just a reminder, once again, I'm coming at this from Zone 9. So your garden chores might be different if you're in a different zone. And remember, to find your zone, all you need to do is go to USDA, I think it's .gov, and a map should pop up, and you should be able to see what garden zone you are in. So this is for Zone 9 and somewhat similar zones, but here we go. February is actually very busy. We're transitioning from winter to spring here. I know some areas, according to a, is it a, is it a gopher? No, groundhog. There you go. Groundhog day that predicts six more weeks of, of winter. But. That was today. Oh, that was today, Joe says. <laughs> I thought I thought you were trying to interrupt me and tell me something really important. Today is Groundhog Day, huh? Yeah. I, do you like how it's calling it a gopher? <laughs> I couldn't remember. A gopher predicts that. Gophers don't do anything for my garden. Anyways, thanks, Joe, for interjecting. And I thought you were trying to tell me something like we're not recording. But anyways, all right. Here we go. Busy. Um even though we're transitioning to spring, we're really hoping we get some some rain and more snow here in California. So the first thing is, if you're listening to this on the early side of February, your fruit trees most likely have not bloomed. They're starting. The beekeepers, the almond growers, there's bee boxes, which means the almonds are going to be blooming anytime now. And it seems to get earlier every year. It used to be, oh, spray at Thanksgiving and Christmas and Valentine's Day for peach leaf curl. By the time Valentine's Day comes around, generally some of our fruit trees are already blooming. But before they open up, there's still a chance to get one more spray of liquid copper. And liquid copper controls the peach leaf curl which also affects your nectarines. And peach leaf curl is that red puckering of the leaves can cause defoliation. Once your tree gets it, there's spores on it. So you need to spray every year and you don't want it. So you want to prevent it. So go ahead and, and spray anyways, even if your tree, you've just planted your tree. So spray one more time, get a spray in there with some liquid copper. And liquid copper is an all around good fungicide. So if you've had shot hole fungus on apricots, even if you've had powdery mildew on your roses, you could still spray liquid copper. There's still time to spray some dormant oil. If you have you know, insects like aphids and scale and mealybugs, it sort of smothers the overwintering pests there. So those are two sprays that you could do. Um, it is also time to prune your fruit trees and prune your roses. And I always say, make sure you have a few days uh, of, of dry weather because you don't want to prune and have it rain. That just sort of increases the chance of um, them staying wet, not healing and bacteria getting in there. So prune your roses, prune your fruit trees, start pruning your grapes, um, blackberries you could prune back. Still hold off on pruning any of your frost sensitive plants. Hold off pruning your citrus just because we could still get another frost. And remember the old foliage is protecting that hidden foliage that hasn't really been exposed to the cold. So anything frost sensitive, just wait to uh, prune. And your camellias are probably starting to bloom, right? So remember um, when they're done blooming, probably not until March or so, that's when you prune, but definitely don't prune things that bloom like your forsythias and your camellias and your only one time blooming roses. Don't prune those now. All right, so what can you plant now? Um, Vegetable-wise, we're getting another round of broccoli you could plant. So you could plant broccoli. If you didn't get a crop in the fall or winter, go ahead and plant broccoli. Plant beets. You could do plants or seeds, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, another round of cauliflower you could plant, chard, collards, kale, lettuce, mustard, peas. And towards the end of the month, you could even actually start some potatoes and then, of course, radishes. So those are some vegetables you could plant. And bare root. There's still bare root roses and bare root fruit trees you could plant. Nurseries generally, whatever they don't sell, they pot up. 
or some automatically do that anyways these days. They get the bare root in and they put them in uh, like peat pots. So if you want a good selection, go into nurseries now, but it's not the only time to plant those. It's just the only time to plant them as bare root plants. All right, also amend your soil, getting it ready for spring planting. And amending soil just means get organic material in there, get the nutrients in there, it's your own compost, store-bought compost, chicken manure, alfalfa pellets, really anything to get the nutrients in there, the microorganisms breaking it down, uh, getting that nitrogen to a usable source. So you don't want to just put it right when you plant. Ideally, you put it ahead of time. Um, beneficial nematodes, I uh, for me mentioned this before, these are good worms that are in, you put in your soil that are going to control pests that are overwintering or have a life stage in the soil. You could buy them from Arbico Organics. And you want to add them more than just once because you want them around and you want the numbers multiplying. So in spring, summer, or all the different stages of the, quote, bad bugs are in there, they're able to get them. You just really mix them in water and pour them into your soil, moist soil. Yes, you can start planting your uh, your tomatoes and peppers inside. I just looked at um, uh, Brad. Brad's from um, Wild Boar Tomatoes. It looks like he just did his first planting of tomatoes in the greenhouse. It's a little on the early side, but if you want to get your plants big and robust, go ahead, start them now. Don't start them outside. Start them now. But along with that is if you haven't bought your seeds, buy your seeds if you don't have any, because people are really into gardening. And some of these seeds a few years ago, I know were just gone, sold out. So buy online, buy at your local nursery. Um, so buy your seeds. And yes, you could start your peppers and tomatoes inside. And let's see what else we got. General cleanup. Of course, there's still weed control. There's a lot of winter weeds. I know there's the Oxalis prescope, which is called sourgrass. It's that yellow blooming. It's not a grass at all. That you have to dig up by its bulbs underneath and prevent it from going to seed. And then there's the geranium weed, fillery, those just spread like crazy. So number one rule of controlling weeds is don't let them go to flower. That means they're going to seed. That means seed's going to drop in your soil and you're going to have seeds in your soil for years to come. I know there's, the, you know, oh, if a plant goes to seed, you have seed in there for the next 10 years. It depends on the plant. And really the best thing to do is hit it, knock them down, smother them. You've heard me talk about the organic sprays. Really only work on annuals that are very small and small emerging seedlings. If something's a, a big perennial, it's not going to work. If it's a hardy annual, you may only burn the top. And if you don't burn it completely, it might even come back that same season. So control the weeds still. And... Let's see what else. That is pretty much it for for uh, February. You got rose rose planting, rose pruning, rose spraying, tree pruning, uh, tree spraying, tree planting. You got your vegetable seeds inside for your summer. You could still plant your outdoor winter crops. Compost to mend your soil. Remember, if you have a compost pile, make sure it's moist and it has good amounts of nitrogen to carbon. Uh, beneficial nematodes, spray to smother overwintering insects, do a little bit of cleanup, but not so much that you're exposing those frost sensitive plants to it. Um, and yeah, that's that's it. At work, we had the students finish pruning up the orchard. I sprayed liquid copper uh, last week on them, and we're just doing some cleanup. And you know, spring flowers are coming up. Yes, you could still plant some. Uh, your your spring annual flowers, you could still plant poppies, wildflowers, and you could plant perennials as long as they're not frost sensitive. Nurseries are starting to ramp up what they have. Um, it's a little too early to plant sunflowers and zinnias directly outside. Remember, it's still February, still a chance of getting cold, but our days are going to get longer. Temperatures are going to get warmer. So buy those seeds, just be prepared and ready when it when it's time. So if I left anything off, which there's a good chance I did, just let me know at MarleneThePlantLady at gmail.com. And if you have any insights, uh, let me know. And of course, um, follow me on Instagram and Facebook at MarleneThePlantLady. 
and I, my goal is to try to do one new video on YouTube a week. I just posted one on the myths of coffee grounds, Epsom salts, and can't remember the other one, Epsom salts, coffee grounds, and eggshells. There you go. The three pet peeves. And you know, there's some science behind it. And the next one I'm going to do is actually just a uh, quick video on February to-do list. So follow me. That, my YouTube for that is Everything Gardening with Marlene Simon. That's me. So until next time, everyone, happy gardening.